Okay, this might turn out to be a terrible mistake, but I have bought a early to mid 2000s power bike. Um, it's got some issues, noticeably that the entire battery mechanism, battery box assembly is missing. It appears that someone's had a go at getting in here, which is where the controller is, which doesn't board well. Um, as far as I make out, this is a 200 watt DC motor, um, which basically means that if you put voltage across it, it should spin, which is probably one of the first things I'm going to check. Um, if that checks out, then the next thing to do is to sort the controller out, make sure that runs. I probably will be running this on um, lead acid batteries um, for cheapness. Um, this particular bike only needs to run uh, for two miles per day. Okay, so I've, okay, so I've pulled away um, the t some tape and heat shrink and what have you, and revealed what I expected to find, which is only two wires going to the front motor, which again would confirm to me this is a DC motor. Um, so I guess all I have to do now is try and apply some power and uh, see if the motor spins up. That's it, I think. Here we go. So I guess the next stage is to rig up 36 volts somehow and um, see if the controller lights up. But that is really good news. Okay, so the mud guards and the carrier has been taken off. Okay, so I've taken the control panel off and I've got it down here. Um, the plastic cowling itself is actually not in very good condition, so I think that's probably not going to go back on. Um, the electronics module sits in this rather nice um, plastic um, weather, well, sort of weather protection. Uh, and this was what was inside it, and this is in exceptionally good condition, physically. Um, there's no watermarks, there's no rust, in fact there's no, nothing really to indicate that that isn't anything other than brand new, even though it is, um, I suspect, you know, getting on for 20 years. Um, now I've disconnected the, the power cables off the battery connector. And basically, what you had was the negative went straight to this connector here, which went straight to electronics. The live side, which is there, went through a um, bullet connector, which fell off, but which I don't think is original. I think someone's um, someone's had a go at repairing that in the past. And then it went from the ignition switch. So that, that kill went to the ignition switch, and then from the ignition switch, again, it goes straight into the electronics. Going out the electronics on this plug anyway are four wires uh, and I believe that these are actually just uh, basically live live negative negative. Um, I believe that's how it's set up. Um, right, uh, the ignition switch. The ignition switch seems reasonably straightforward in that you have two big cables going in Right, so that's basically the main power. So it's going to switch, and then the other side there's two smaller um, wires. And if we look at the the power side of the switch, you can see it's very badly burned. Uh, and in fact, the little thing that spins around and is supposed to make contact with it, it's it's burnt down as well. So, so that's. That's that's not going to go back. That's I'm going to put a different uh, ignition system in there at some point. Now on the other side, it looks relatively straightforward. In that it looks like what happens is when you go to the first position, nothing happens. But when you go to the second position, it shorts out these two wires. 
So these two wires must indicate to the controller that it's in the ignition position two. Okay, so the battery box is starting to take shape. I'm a bit happy with it now. So at the moment I've got a wooden carcass with metal sides, which will come off to um, service the batteries. I'm going to have to uh, sort these sharp edges out. Maybe put some either tin across the top of here just to make it all look the same. Maybe just put a um, piece of vinyl on there. Um, but otherwise, that's what it's basically going to look like uh, when it's complete. 